For the settings for smaller lettering, uh, what I like to use is a little bit different than what the defaults are. But we can actually change those defaults. Um, we can save our own lettering settings if we would want, uh, or our own satin stitch settings. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to left click on this blue color chip, and when I left click on the blue color chip, it selects all my letters with a right click on screen. You can see that they are flashing blue and white. That means they're selected and that means that I can go to the settings and change them. So after they are selected I'm going to go to my settings here which I can left click on property settings. After I left click my area object stitch properties appear. The first thing I like to change is the basic step. This is the average step length that the uh, software is going to take for this stitch type. I actually am going to highlight that. I am working in millimeters, so I want you to notice that up here at the top, and I'm going to change that down to 2.0. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the underlay tab. With the underlay, by default, zigzag is selected. I'm going to take zigzag by left clicking on it and bringing it over to the right hand side. Just left click on the arrow pointing to the right take center, left click on center, and bring it over to the left. Just left click. Now it's going to apply a center run underlay. Along with the center run underlay, I like to take the maximum step length or the maximum stitch length and bring it down to about three millimeters. The minimum step is fine. We'll then go to the comp pull compensation tab and I'm going to bring this off to the side to show you actually what that does. The standard value I like to bring down, I like to highlight that and bring that down anywhere between 0 0.20 and 0.25. Here I'm going to bring it down to 0 0.20 and what um, standard pull compensation is is the stitches that extend beyond the actual blue and white flashing line. Now you don't want to go down to 0 0.0 or you know no compensation at all because your stitches are going to uh, sink into the fabric a little bit no matter what. Um, we're just taking away some of it because we don't need as much bulk. When I do that I'm going to also hit apply. You can see that that, um, that brings down um, the boldness of the letters or the bulk of the letters and also I'm going to bring the cross down the cross value down to 0.15 about half. That is more for lettering or areas that have two um, stitch angles kind of coming together at 90 degrees, kind of for these T's. So you don't have as much uh, stitching going into those sections. I then will go to my last tab at the top called Satin. I want to deselect the auto stitch shortening. We don't need that with small lettering. That's good for larger lettering, but we don't need that for smaller lettering. So I deselect that. The density, depending upon the weight of thread that you're using, you may want to go up in density. And going up in number means that you're going to have less spacing between your row, between your row of stitching or less density. So going up in number, you're going to have less stitching. Going down in number, you're going to have more stitching because you're going to have um, less space between your rows of stitching. You know, you you have point. Uh, let's say you go down to point three eight you're going to have less space between each row of stitching than you would at 0.42. So again, this does depend on what weight of thread that you're using. Sometimes if you're using a um, 60 weight thread, which is actually a thinner thread, you can get better detail out of your work because it does, um, it, it is less bulky than the 40 weight thread. I'm going to leave the density as is and we're going to go ahead and press OK. Once I press OK and right click off to the side, you're going to see that my lettering actually looks a little bit more crisp. After we have ch changed that um, those settings, I can actually go back into my properties, which I just hit the space bar, and um, what I can do is I can save these properties. If I click save, I can actually save them as the default settings, and when I click here, I click on default, hit save, it now overrides, as soon as I hit yes, it overrides all the settings that are default for the satin stitching. So, we'll go ahead and hit OK. So the next time, I'll go to Insert Text, 
and we'll go ahead and press OK and I generate my stitches. If I right click on my L here, just right click there, go to my stitch settings, you'll notice that my my stitch settings are different than the default. Remember we changed it from 3 to 2, there's the underlay, there's the pull compensation, there's the satin. So anytime I bring in letters or anything with a satin stitch, it's going to go to those new default stitch settings. If I do want to change that, or if I want to save that as like a separate uh, file, I can select an area, go to my property settings, I'll hit the save button, and what I'll do is I'll name this small lettering for Andrea. I'll hit save, and then OK. So um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to reset the defaults. Um, so we're going to go to accessories, default stitch settings, I'm going to click on satin, I'm going to click on load factory property here. When I do that it asks me do you want to continue, I say yes, and it goes back to all the factory settings. So it goes back to 3.0, goes back to a zigzag underlay, so on and so forth. So let's go to a new design. We'll go to insert text and we'll just press OK, press go, and these are the defaults. I'll right click on one of the letters when I right click on that and go to my settings, left click on property settings. You can see the basic step is three. If we go to the underlay it says zigzag. So it is back to the defaults or, or back to the factory settings. If I want to take this area and apply my small stitch or my small lettering stitch type to it. Um, remember I am only working on the L because the L is only selected. I'll go ahead and hit load. It'll bring up all my different property settings. I'm going to scroll down. This is what I just saved. Small lettering for Andrea. Press open. I then will hit apply. Apply those settings and then OK. Once I do that, it applies it to that L. Let's go ahead and right click, hold and drag a box around the, the rest of the letters. We'll click on the property settings. I'll click on load. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find small lettering for Andrea. Press open and let's move this off to the side so we can see what happens when we hit apply. I left click apply press OK, right click off to the side, and now we can see that it looks much, much better.